Welcome back S550 enthusiast. Today I'm going to go over my Keltrak IRS stud system for the S550 Mustangs. I'm just going to give a brief overview of what you get with the kit, why I came out with it, and show you some examples under the car of uh, you know features and benefits and how it can help you. I get messages uh, just about daily asking, you know, why, why, why? What, what, what? What does the kit do? Why should I use it? It's really not for everybody. I don't uh, push it on anyone really. The primary benefit is it uh, comes in handy when you work on your car a lot. So if you're replacing diff bushings, uh, ring and pinion gears, you're constantly braking, having to lower the subframe down, it really does help work on the car. And it's nice because, um, you know, you don't have issues. I got a bunch of these bolts. People come in here, I work on their cars, my cars, etc. Um, you don't have these issues where you trash the bolts and then you trash the threads in the subframe. The reason I came out with this kit is because I spent, um, you know, a solid five years just doing tech every day on the phone for S550 owners. And uh, I can't tell you how many people would call and say, I was putting your cradle bushing lockout kit on and um, something happened and I cross threaded my driver side front. The driver side front threads on the subframe mounts are very notorious for having issues. Uh, I don't know why. I suspect it's because of the amount of load that the left driver side sees. It's just a theory. Or maybe that's the last bolt in the installation process and they jam it home. I'm not really sure why. But the driver side front subframe mount bushing uh, mounting point, the threads in the chassis seem to gum up all the time. So let me go over what comes in the kit. The kit's going to include four of these high strength steel studs. These are not catalog parts. These are custom made for me. Um, just want to throw that out there because I've had people say, well, why would I spend all that money on it? Well, when I first started making these, I was buying thread and cutting them by hand. And let me tell you, uh, that was not fun. So I found a company that would manufacture these for me to, to my specifications. They're zinc coated. They come with a large zinc coated washer, a smaller, thicker zinc coated washer. All this is high strength steel. And then they come with a, uh, you know, a nice zinc coated jam nut. They also come with anti-seize and they come with a tap to chase the threads. Now, you don't always have to use this when you install this kit. I only suggest using this if you really have to. I do not like people chasing their threads or using these if they do not have to because so many people end up damaging their threads uh, further when they try to use these. So try to only use this if you really need it. Um, but many times if you just blow the hole out with air and, and spray some brake cleaner in there and blow it out um, and then you put this anti-seize on the on the first half inch of these, that's what I suggest, when you when you thread these into the chassis, take this anti-seize, put a little line for a half inch on each one of them on the front. Um, you should be able to thread that in by hand, no problems. Um, again, let me show you this just so you see. That is very, very common. To gum these bolts up and you know people say well I can go buy new ones for three or four dollars a piece yeah well, I mean you can do you know it's like saying anything right you blow your engine you can just go buy one out of a junkyard but you know you end up spending twenty thousand dollars on a billet engine same thing here you get nice parts um, there's also features and benefits additional that I'm going to go over uh, so the first thing would be to replace the blue bolts with the stud kit so you have new bolts everything's new um, now I have this little ruler here so you can see there's approximately two inches more thread on these studs distance for distance that's why I have them lined up on this table okay so again you got about two more inches almost exactly two inches and then you know that part right there is not threaded that that helps you know go in but the nice thing about this stud kit is it doesn't need that chamfer because once it's in, it's in and you never remove them again or you don't have to remove them again. Um, the nut size is 22 millimeter. I have this here because I'm going to show you when I get under the car, um, you double the nut up if you're having issues because sometimes people say, oh, I can't get the links right sticking out of the chassis. So uh, I'm going to keep this in my hand and show you some stuff. As far as the dimensions, you're going to have... Uh, six, I believe it was six and five eighths roughly of thread here, and then you're going to have about two inches less here. So you're going to have four and five eighths. 
So they're about two inches more thread. Um, but the nice thing about this is you can take this down further to gain thread uh, for when you're working on your car. So let's hop under the car real quick and I'll kind of show you what I've mounted up to uh, show you guys what to expect. Actually, before I get down here, let me get my tape measure. And I do want to share this really quick. When you install these on the car, you want about four and a half inches, you want about four and a half inches of thread. So once you, once you put them in, you want this to be at 4.5 inches from the chassis right here. Now what I've done here is I took a few parts I had laying around and I modified this to be the thickness of the factory bushing, which is two and three quarters, okay? That's why I did that. So this is exactly how it would look if it's mounted uh, in the subframes under the car. I've got a subframe over there I was gonna throw up here. I'm just so tired of working on this thing. So I rigged it, excuse me, I rigged it so this would replicate what it's gonna be like. So it's gonna look just like that when it's installed. Okay, so four and a half inches sticking out of the chassis and then uh, approximately on all four corners a one inch, okay, see? Approximately one inch of thread showing from there. This phone is horrible. All right, so let's get into the details here. This side has the stud. That side over there has the factory bushing. So here is my favorite benefit to this kit. My favorite benefit is this is how it would be if it's mounted up and the cradle is here. So you have one inch of thread here. So automatically without taking this out, you, you can drop down the, the cradle one inch, okay? So you could do that and you can drop that down an inch and you can you develop an inch of clearance up here. Well, the nice thing about this kit though, I'm turning the whole thing right now. See how easy it turns by hand? What I like about this kit, personally, and we're gonna, I'm gonna thread that on so I can grab it a little bit better. We're gonna actually compare it to the factory. Those of you that have spent a lot of time under your car, you're really going to appreciate, especially the, uh, you diff, diff bushing people. The ones that complain about, okay, so this is free, okay? So you thread it about two, ro two rotations, one, two, and then look. So now you have, I'll hold this and then thread it. Look how far the cradle comes down. Now this isn't how you're actually gonna lower the cradle, I mean, you know. You're just gonna do one corner at a time and you're gonna do it just like you do the factory bolts where you unthread it and then thread it back in two threads. I'm just trying to show you. So now we've got the nut barely hanging on and we've got this up here. Let me make sure it's, oh see I turned it a little bit more. Oh wow, okay, let's get it back. About two rotations roughly. Okay, look at that. Let me get my trusty tape measure here so this is real deal that's how far you can lower the subframe down real deal let's let's measure this real quick and by the way if you guys have this hole here you can actually look in there and see this stud sticking up or the factory bolts and you'll see there's like two inches that protrude through the fitting with the stud kit all right so we have three and an eighth inch, exactly three and an eighth inch. You've just lowered your subframe down that far. So to put that into perspective, look from back here. So your whole subframe is like right here. So you've dropped it. You, you would be able to see the top of your diff and everything right here. So that is the stud kit. Now let's go to the other side. Actually, before I leave, I'm going to show you guys a trick. Remember three and an eighth, right? When you're putting this on, sometimes people will say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't get my measurements right. So you're turning all this, right? If you need to take a nut from another side, so like I'm turning it in right now, but sometimes what will happen is people can't get that to thread very well, even after they chase the threads. So then you just use, you double, double nut it. So you put this on here. 
okay? And then it's jammed up against that one. And then you take your 22 millimeter and then you turn it like this, okay? And then also, you can actually do that uh, if you have these in the, in the car for a long time and then you need to remove something uh, or you need to remove the actual stud for whatever reason, you can do it the opposite way. So you can basically, um, here, let's take this down. So you, you, can, you can turn this until it hits that. It'll, it'll get to a point where it bottom out. Then you can turn it. You can turn the whole thing with the top one because it'll pull down on that. So just wanted to show you how to double nut it just in case because, again, I've had people actually contact me and say, I don't know how to thread this thing in and out. Now let's go to the other side. Take, take my socket with me just in case I need it. All right. So now, now we have the factory bolt. Again, I've rigged this up, so that should really just match the um, the factory right there, okay? So let's get to removing this one. I'm gonna swap hands real quick. So the other side we were at three and an eighth inch for how far we could come down. So this side, so this has been, you know, this is, has always been my cheater method on working on things is I'll take the bolt all the way out. Like when I'm doing a lockout kit or springs or anything, springs is a big one. If you, if you have this stud kit while you do springs, it makes your life way easier. So anyways, uh, look, you can, all, you can see the metal on that. We're all the way out. So now I'm going to go in two threads basically just to so then okay so now you've lowered your cradle down i mean that's really not a lot look so this is a good example the perfect example as to why i really like these kits hold on one second let me get around this so now what we have here is we have oh my gosh look at that dude an inch and an eighth basically two inches more over there let's zoom in on that look at that two inches more than here isn't that crazy that makes a huge difference when you're working on the uh, underneath your car i promise you dropping that subframe down two more inches is just shops love these things at first they were like, why should I use them? Now I've got shops that are putting these on every car that comes through the door when they're doing like lowering springs and rear suspension stuff. So uh, as far as earlier I had mentioned, so here's the front mounting point, right? Um, earlier I had mentioned the whole four and a half deal. You want to, on all four corners, you want to measure from here down. You want the threads to come four and a half inches out of this right here. So once you thread them in, just hold the tape measure up, boom, four and a half inches, and then you can install everything. When you install everything, let's go back to the other side. When you install everything, you can, you can go all the way. So, I'll give you an example real quick. The one inch is just a rule of thumb because that's approximately, if you install them properly, that's approximately what you're left over with, okay? So it's just a good rule of thumb instead of like an inch and three sixteenths. Okay, so, oh, I doubled, I forgot I double nutted that, okay. So there's less than, if you end up like that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. If you end up like that, that's perfectly fine. What you don't want to end up with is two inches or whatever showing of this thread. So this is fine. Um, if you need to do that, as a matter of fact, somebody recently sent me a picture. They installed it 
and uh, they sent me a picture with about that much showing, and uh, they were worried about it, and I said, that's totally fine, no issue there. All right, so basically, that's the Keltrak IRS stud kit. I've made this thing not focus now for whatever reason. When I manually focus it, it, it doesn't focus well anywhere else. But anyways, that's the IRS stud kit. It allows you to drop the subframe down. Uh, it allows you to permanently put a stud in the chassis and not have to keep on removing it uh, and destroy that um, driver's side front of there. As a matter of fact, let's see how this car does before I get off this video. I haven't even tried it. This car's pretty much a virgin. All right, so here's the driver's side front. Let me see. Oh, yeah, see, this is the only one. There you go. I'm going to have to chase that. I'm turning as hard as I can. This is the only one. All the other ones went in by hand. Just, just doing this, right? This one's gummed up. <sighs> so there's your example right there. So what happens is this is exactly what happens. Before I let you guys go, what happens is this is this is what happens when these cars are in shops, and this will not go in. So then they're thinking, oh, I cross threaded it, and they take it in and out, in and out, and then they gum these threads up so much, then they 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 jam it home with an impact. <laughs> and they run it in and it's screwed so i have all these customers that will contact me and say man i took everything apart and uh you know this thread's all messed up on one of my cars uh my very first prototype stud kit i had a uh our tech at bmr uh had my cradle in and out a few times and you know i remember we even had issues and and i basically instructed him to jam it home back then with uh with an impact and uh, that car is why I developed this kit years ago, okay? Um, just kind of used it for myself. I didn't sell it. But um, that kit would not hold the full torque. Um, that kit would only do, I think it was uh, 110 foot-pounds. Well, these, uh, m my suggested torque spec is 120 foot-pounds. Uh, the factory spec is 129. The reason that I do 120 is because this is all... Um, uh, coated real nicely and it's real slick um, and that makes a big difference you, the, the factory bolts are very dry um, and they don't have any type of lubrication and then the washer on them is real dry so it's rubbing up against the bushing the steel and uh, that interferes with your torque right these have a these have several very nice coated very slick washers and a very slick zinc coated nut so they don't really need 129 120 and mark them with a paint pen and you're perfect so thanks for uh tuning in guys i'm gonna have more and more and more of these of course i just wanted to show you this stud kit uh i constantly get asked about why 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 and what 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 and uh so there you have it have a good one